Okay, so in the previous lesson, we learned about this uh, nasal cavity. So the, the air enters the nasal cavity, filtered by the hair, and then okay, the, those large particulates will be blocked by the nasal hair. And inside nasal cavity, we also have the mucus to trap, okay? But the cleaning process, okay, the cleaning of the air will still continue in the next regions of the gas exchange uh, uh, system, which is trachea. So if you look at the trachea, also known as windpipe, it's about four inches long and about one inch in diameter. So it's quite large, right? One inch right, in... in it will convert to the centimeter is roughly about 2.5 eh, centimeter. Okay, so this large airway allow us to breathe in and out the air. Okay, so if you look at this, this is the anterior view. You can see that this is our right lungs, left lungs. So you have this cartilage, trachea cartilage to support the trachea so that when the air enters here, okay, so the air either can enter into the right lung or left lung based on the bronchus okay so if go to i mean enter into the right primary bron bronchus you will enter the right lung left bronchus you will enter into the left lung so we have a pair of the lung in this case okay so if i cut it here can you see that if i insert and cut it here this is known as the transverse sections okay transverse sections so these transverse sections you can see that you have the uh cartilage can you see that? You have the cartilage and you have the lumen. So we are going to talk about it in detail, each regions of the trachea. Okay. So before we proceed, let me do a quick uh, summary. It's not a summary, but to show you guys the drawing of the trachea and each part of the trachea and what we need to emphasize, what type of tissues available there and what are the functions of each layer of the trachea. So, because it's a windpipe, okay, it's an airway, it must have the lumen. So all tubular structure, they must have the lumen. So this lumen, okay, I start to draw the trachea. So it's a transverse sectioning of the trachea. So the transverse sectioning of the trachea is start, okay, I start it from the lumen, okay. So you can see that the lumen. So in, in fact, you see the lumen is not really, okay, you look at the lumen. The lumen is not really round shape. It's more a bit of oval or triangular shape. So this is the lumen of the trachea. So the first, the innermost layer of the tissues, okay, because they produce mucus. So this innermost layer, we call them as a mucosa. Mucosa means that it can produce mucus. So we have the first layer, the innermost layer, termed as mucosa layer surrounding our tracheal uh, lumen. Okay. Then between the mucosa layer and the cartilage, we have the submucosa. The second layer is termed as submucosa. And this, uh, after mucosa, we have what we call the cartilage. But this cartilage is not a full ring round shape cartilage, it's incomplete C shaped cartilage. Okay, so you can see that this cartilage actually tapering at the end there. Okay, if you draw this, then you can see that the tapering at the end. Okay, tapering at. Okay, and this cartilage is not complete. Can you see that it's not complete? Okay. Uh, we have the, the layer of this, eh, the, 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 the tissues that connect the two ends together. So these tissues is termed as the smooth muscle. Okay, smooth muscle. And now you can see that between the cartilage and also the mucosa la layer, in between of them, we have this what we call the submucosa. Okay, submucosa. Okay, uh? So later, I will, I, will, I will label for you guys to worry about this. Now, next. So surrounding the entire trachea, surrounding the entire trachea, we do have this called connective tissues. Okay, so now we start the labeling for the trachea. Okay, so first of all, 
We do have the A. This one is termed as the lumen. Lumens of the trachea. So the innermost layer. Now look at this, the innermost layer. So this innermost layer is termed as mucosa layer. Now be careful if a question asks you, okay, what is this layer? So it's a mucosa layer, but what type of cells that form this mucosa layer? Majority of the cells is pseudo stratified. Pseudo means fake one, stratified. Stratified means layer, okay, ciliated, they have cilia. Columna, because it's from column, epithelium. Okay, and who? And also the goblet cell. So these two kinds of cells form the mucosa, but majority are pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay, so that is the cells, that are the cells that you can find at the mucosa regions. Now, next regions you're going to see here is after mucosa, so below the mucosa layer, okay, underneath of the mucosa layer is termed as submucosa. Okay, submucosa, I mean under, okay, submucosa. So at submucosa, where you can get the artery and wind that supply the blood to the trachea. And the wind is the one that brings the blood out of the trachea. Okay, what else you can get? Very important here, you also have the glands called mucus gland. I will uh, show you guys what's the difference be between the goblet cells and mucus gland. Both of them have the same functions. Right? Both of them have the same functions. They are going to secrete mucus. Okay. Then next layer, you can see that after submucosa, you have this layer termed as the cartilage. So this cartilage also termed as the incomplete. If you describe it, it's incomplete C-shaped cartilage. Okay, incomplete C-shaped cartilage. Okay, uh, and, and at the end of this C-shaped cartilage, you do have the muscle cells that connect to this. So this muscle cells is termed as smooth muscle. Okay, smooth muscle. So smooth muscle is involuntary neurogenics. Okay, so basically means that they contract and relax, okay, without the conscious regions of our brain, okay, to tell them to contract. And last regions here, the surrounding is termed as the connective tissues. So what is the function of connective tissues? Basically, they anchor your, our trachea at the correct positions, okay? So I make it smaller then you'll be able to actually okay, to take a photo of this diagram. Okay, so let us zoom into this uh, mucosa region. So the type of cell that form the mucosa, okay, is the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay, so this pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium can be found in trachea and also bronchus. Okay, you can get this too. Okay, so students always confused. So what's the difference between pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium versus ciliated columnar epithelium? So ciliated columnar epithelium found at the first part or upper part of bronchial. Okay, it's quite histology now, huh? quite histology. So now let me draw out the structure. Pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. So from the word pseudo stratified, pseudo means that fake. Stratified means layer. So it gives us the idea they have many, many layers, which is wrong because if you look at pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium, this is how the cells look like. The cells weren't arranged in a very nice order. 
So some of the cells actually come out from the front, some actually hide at the back. So it forms something like quite a triangular shape cells a lot. Okay, and because of the nucleus, they're located at different locations. So it may make us think that, okay, as a whole, as the entire structure, you may think that they actually have many, many layers because the locations of the nucleus, okay, are, are make us or mis mislead us, okay? So because they are columnar, so they are tall cells, eh, tall cells, and with cilia. So when you draw cilia, make sure that they don't have the same length and same direction. And when you draw cilia, don't make your cilia actually float. Okay, they won't float. Okay, so the, this, the, the length will be different, okay, in terms of cilia. Okay, and there's a nucleus. So why they are pseudostratified? Because each of the cells, each of the cells, they are attached to the basement membrane. The blue color actually is a basement membrane. Okay, so if label here, this is cilia or cilium. So this is the nucleus, and this is the basement membrane. Are you clear? So this is how the pseudostratified ciliated columnar epithelium look like. But how about ciliated columnar epithelium? So if without the word pseudostratified, so it might be a simple, so only one layer. So the structure will be something like this. They're still columnar cells, but they arrange very nicely, very orderly. And the nucleus actually at the one layer, layer, okay, one level. So you won't misunderstand. You won't misunderstand that they actually have many, many layers. So all the cells same. Can you see that? They attach to the basement membrane with the cilia. Okay, don't make your cilia float. Okay, so this is cilia. This is nucleus and basement membrane. So can you see that the two different types of the pseudo-stratified ciliated columnar epithelium versus ciliated columnar epithelium? Helium. So pseudo stratified give us the idea of many, many layer, but in fact they only have one layer. Are you clear? Okay. So now another cells that adds the mucosa, another cells, okay. This is the first type of cells in the trachea, pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. So the second layer, second type of cell is termed as goblet cells. So if you look at it under the light microscope, goblet cell is quite easy for us to identify it if you focus it correctly, okay? And you can see two features. One feature is something like a, a funnel like this. Okay? The shape of the cells will be something like this, like funnel, okay? Something like this, the shape. And the very distinctive feature of goblet cells the nucleus, because at the lower part of the cells, it tends to form triangular shaped nucleus. Okay, and if you adjust correct light, I mean the lighting, okay, and the intensity of the light, so sometimes you may see vesicle inside the cell and shining in color. Okay, so this one, I'm sorry, let me undo. So you can see that this is the vesicle. You can see a vesicle and nucleus of the globus cell. So nucleus show us a triangular shape. This is how you actually identify the goblet cell. So goblet cell will be uh, in between of these pseudo stratified, okay, in between of these pseudo stratified uh, columnar epithelium. Okay, so in between of the cells. Okay, so what is the functions of the mucosa layer? So in mucosa layer, then you have to look at the combinations of these two types of cells. So first, goblet cells. What is the function of goblet cells? So goblet cells, actually, they are secretory cells. So the row, the first row, 
they actually produce or synthesize a chemical known as mucin. Mucin is the main component of the mucus. So once they make the mucin, then it continue to make the mucus. So the second one actually is to secrete mucus onto a eh, mucus onto the linings of the lumen. Are you clear? So what is the function of this mucus? So mucus is sticky. So the function of mucus is to trap foreign particle. Okay, they trap foreign particle. For example, uh, dust. I mean, a tiny dust. It's not the, 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 the large one because the large one already filtered by our hair. Okay, the nasal hair already. Okay, pathogen, for example, bacteria. Okay, mucus. So, but the question here is, a mucus, they only can trap. Mucus have no ability. Okay, so this is unfortunately, mucus have no ability to kill pathogen. And understand that mucus has no ability to kill pathogen. So pathogen will survive inside the mucus and then they start to uh, multiply and it causes the infections. Correct not? So to, in order to remove this mucus, then it depends on the second type of the cells here, ciliated cells, for all ciliated cells. So as a ciliated epithelium, so means include what? Include, number one, include the pseudo stratified. Okay, ciliated, columnar, epithelium, includes ciliated, columnar, epithelium, includes ciliated, cuboidal, epithelium. Okay, pseudo stratified. Okay, pseudo stratified. Okay, uh, ciliated columnar epithelium. You can find them. Okay, you can find them where you can find them in trachea. You can find them in bronchus. Ciliated columnar epithelium and ciliated cuboidal epithelium. Both of them, you can find them at bronchial. Okay, so but their role are the same. So what else their role? In this case, so cilia, we focus at the cilia. So we do know that cilia consists of microtubule. Do you remember microtubule? Arranged in nine plus two arrangement. They remember, and because of this nine plus two, nine doublet and two singlets or uh, single microtubules, and because of interaction between these two, okay, allow the cilia to have the beating actions. So the beating of cilia give us the cleaning action. Okay, sorry for the delay, eh? uh, but basically the beating action of the cilia due to these nine plus two arrangements of the microtubule allow us actually to uh, have the cleaning actions, okay? So these cleaning actions help us to remove 
the mucus. So basically, this is the role of the mucosa. Okay, so submucosa. Nothing much we're going to learn because it's quite a number of uh, quite a number of cells that form the submucosa here. Okay, so but what we're going to learn here, submucosa actually consists of these two very important uh, structures or features here is the arteries and also the vein. So I do not need to go through the artery and veins anymore, the function artery and the veins, but I want to more, I mean so I'll go into more detail about this mucus gland. Okay, so for mucus glands, as you, uh, same as goblet cells, let's say my goblet cells, mucus glands also produce mucus. Are you clear? And empty this mucus uh, or send this mucus to the lumen. But what's the difference between the mucus glands compared to the uh, goblet cells? Goblet cell is individual cells. Just now I say that, I'll show you guys. So goblet cell again. Goblet cells, they're individual cells. So the shape of the cells will be something like this. Okay, like a funnel. Okay, and then with the nucleus. Okay, so if as I say that, if you focus it correctly with the correct light, light intensity, you will be able to see the vesicle and triangular nucleus. So these cells, one cells, they can produce the mucus already. Okay. Now, how about mucus gland? We're talking about a gland, it cannot be one cells. It means that it's a whole series of cells. Okay. Now, for example, sometimes you can see that the cells tend to form the infolding like this. So this one cells, epithelium. A special epithelium will start to form something like this. It forms something like a channel. Okay, so the nucleus. So not one cells, but many, many cells. So the cells located in this region form a gland. And this gland, because they secrete mucus, so we term them as mucus, oh, sorry, mucus gland. So these cells can actually secrete the mucus. Can you see that? It's not directly. The cell produces the mucus, but they don't secrete it directly into the lumens, but it's secreted into the gland. So this gland actually will release it later. Okay, so there's a difference between a mucus, uh, sorry, goblet cells and also the mucus glands. Okay, clear? So what is the function? So it depends on the part of our um, submucosa, whether it's artery and veins. So basically they involve in this case a blood transportation that I do not need to go in uh, to detail, eh? we have talked about this already. And mucus glands that produce mucus. So what's the difference between the goblet cells and the mucus gland? Goblet cells at mucosa, yeah? Don't, don't confuse. Goblet cells at mucosa layer. Mucus glands at submucosa because of the infolding from the glands. And this gland is termed as the mucus gland. Okay, yeah? Huh? Okay, so the trachea, okay, have the cartilage. So this cartilage in the trachea is described as incomplete C-shaped cartilage, right? incomplete C-shaped cartilage. So how you identify this? So very simple, you can see that in the trachea, you will see this yeah, incomplete, something like C-shaped and tapering at the end. Okay, tapering at the end here. And... So one of the features of the trachea, because of the cells, the chondrocytes that form the trachea, chondrocytes is the cells that form the cartilage. Okay, osteocytes is the one that form our bone. So that's why we have osteo osteoporosis. Okay, we call osteoporosis because the cells is all osteocytes, bone cells. Okay, cartilage. Cartilage actually formed by chondrocytes. Okay, chondrocytes. So this chondrocyte actually will have the this empty gaps known as the lacunae. So when you view it and under the light microscope, 
you can see that a lot of dots. So these dots, when you look at the structure, right, like dots here, then you know that they are cartilage. Okay, because of the chondrocytes and also the lacunae. Okay, now chondrocytes and lacunae, they are not in our syllabus. Okay, so what is the function of cartilage? So they are quite tough material compared to the cells with secretions here. So the it provides support. So, eh, cartilage. So, what is the function of cartilage? They provide support. So, what kind of support to the trachea? What kind of support? So, basically, it's to prevent the collapse of trachea. Okay. Now, why is trachea collapse? Because when there is a change, the airflow, when the airflow in the cartilage, it will cause the pressure change. So this pressure change will cause the trachea to collapse. Right? The pressure change inside the trachea because of the airflow, definitely it's going to cause the collapse of the trachea. But with the cartilage, something like bone dead, so the whole thing won't be collapsed. Are you clear? Okay, uh, so this is the... So why we need to have the cartilage that to provide support. What kind of support to prevent the collapse of the trachea? And this trachea uh, uh, cartilage, they are linked by the smooth muscle. Okay? So this is termed as a smooth muscle. Okay? So this layer smooth muscle, if you look at it, how you differentiate the smooth muscle? So for smooth muscle, generally, they will stain a little bit pinkish in color, okay? And the shape, you can see that the spindle, okay? At the end, you can see this kind of shape, spindle shape. Tapering end, spindle, something like this. Okay, tapering end. So this is a smooth muscle. So what's the function of smooth muscle? So because they are muscle, so they can actually contract or relax. So the contractions of the smooth muscle, we're going to narrow, okay? So contraction or relaxations of the smooth muscle, they can help us to regulate the diameter of the lumens or trachea room, right? Trachea lumens. Now, slightly. Okay, I have to emphasize the word slightly here. Now, why slightly? Because the trachea, they are quite strong material. If they are quite strong material, so it means that you won't be able to adjust much, slightly only to regulate the air flow. Okay, huh? so you can see that the smooth muscle, actually the shape is a bit spindle like this. Can you see that? Ah, the shape. Just now I draw it a bit small, so now I draw it bigger now. So you form something like this, the shape of the cell. Tapering and at both sides. So therefore, in a little under the light microscope, you can see this kind of structure. So this kind of structure is, eh, is smooth muscle. And you have to know that smooth muscle, they are involuntary muscle. Involuntary muscle basically means that we do not need to use our conscious regions of the brain to control, okay, whether they contract or relax because they can contract and relax. I mean, uh, on their own, they're autonomous in this case. So therefore, we do not need to actually ask them to narrow down the diameter or increase the diameter of the lumens, okay? Uh, diameter, okay? So basically... You understand that if they contract, so it means that we lower down the diameter, reduce the diameter of the lumens. When they relax slightly, then they increase the diameter. So decrease the diameter to reduce the, uh, the airflow. But increase the diameter, definitely increase the airflow. More air, okay? So we can actually take a photo for this part, the trachea.
cartilage and also the smooth muscle. So the last part that we learned for today is the connective tissues, okay, which help us to anchor the trachea. So when anchor trachea, so means that our trachea would move, okay, when you run, when you sleep, when you lie down, when you do some activity, you won't see the vibrations of the trachea. Okay, if you no, know, you try to imagine trachea so large that you're going to smash on your surrounding tissues. Okay, but the connective tissues together with the adipose tissue help us to fix the positions of our trachea. So uh, basically, we have gone through the entire histology already. So now we look at the photo. This is drawing. Now we look at the photo of the histology. Okay. So the mucosa trachea is lined by these pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelial cells and also the goblet cells. So what is the function of goblet cells? They are granular. So modified, it's a modified simple columnar epithelial cell that produce mucin. So mucin, they are glycoprotein. They are main components of the mucus. They are uh, the presence of the mucus help us to trap the inhaled foreign particle, okay, such as bacteria, but unfortunately, mucus cannot kill the bacteria. So therefore, we need to remove it. So how we remove it? We have these pseudo-stratified ciliated columnar epithelial cells do have these cilia. So the beating action of the cilia, when they bring it together, they can move the mucus away from the lung, eh? because we don't want the mucus enter into the lung to, so to inhibit the gas exchange. Also, this mucus may trap the pathogen already. So if we don't get rid of pathogen, this pathogen may have chance to enter into the lung and cause us to have the lung infections and also the inflammations to the airway. So how we do it? So we can actually use a cilia to move upwards and move this mucus upwards away from the lung where we can expel it during the coughing, right? Early morning, we cough out this mucus or... Sometimes we do swallow it and digest it in our stomach, okay? But again, uh, it depends on how you look at it, but both ways manage to, to actually reduce the risk of the lung infection. So in terms of histology, if I enlarge it now, you can see that the positions of the nucleus at different level, can you see that? When the position of nucleus at different level, when you look at it, it's as if they have many, many layers, but in fact, all the cells, can you see that all the cells they attach to this a bit purplish colored line here known as the basement membrane. And this pinkish color, can you see that the brush border or we call it as cilia. Okay, so how you identify the goblet cell? As I say, the goblet cell is something like a funnel shaped with a triangular, can you see that triangular nucleus? So this triangular, uh, triangular nucleus and also do you realize that a shiny color inside there contain a lot of this vesicle because you need to carry out, or the goblet cell need to carry out exocytosis to uh, secrete, okay? Exocytosis to secrete the uh, mucus, okay? So there are about 15 to 20 incomplete C-shaped cartilage ring that reinforce the anterior and the lateral sides of the trachea, okay? Anterior means front, okay? Uh, Lateral means a site of the trachea. So this cartilage, okay, very important to keep airway open. And because the airway open, air resistance is low. Eh? We don't want to have a high resistance so that we want the air to continue to move in. And very important with the presence of this cartilage, it can prevent the airway from collapsing down or bursting, but more to collapsing because of the air pressure changes during breathing. Eh? The air flow will change the pressure right, according to the Bernoulli principle. Okay? So if you uh, do not know what's Bernoulli principle, you can actually check it right, about this Bernoulli principle. Bernoulli principle said that when you have the liquid or the air or fluids that move in the high speed, then what will happen here is they will create the regions, of the, uh, the regions with low pressure. Are you clear? So then uh, if you understand the concept of Bernoulli principle, Bernoulli principle is... It's very useful in aerodynamics. So where you have the, the aeroplanes, okay, how the, the, the shape of the wing of the aeroplanes actually play a very important role to lift up the entire plane. Okay, huh? so read about this Bernoulli principle, then you understand more about this. Okay, so if you look at the cartilage, so this is a trachea with the cartilage. So you can see a transparency. So this ring, they are cartilage ring. Can you see that? Okay, huh? activity 7.2, we'll come back later. 
So as I say that, you can see that's the empty hole here, right? You can see there's something like empty hole. So this empty hole is termed as the lacuna, okay? singular lacuna, plural lacunae. Okay, so inside here, you can see that this empty space inside we have the new, uh, the cells. So the cells is termed as the chondrocyte. Okay, so do not worry about the chondro, uh, chondrocytes as well as the lacunae, but entire structure, if you view it under the light microscope, it will show us as a dot. Why dot? Because of this lacunae, the presence of the lacunae. Okay, so at the cartilage, you can see the C-shaped cartilage. So we do have the muscle that actually tie, okay, or connect both ends of the cartilage. Okay, so that's very, very important, this smooth muscle. The role of smooth muscle here actually to help to regulate, okay, the diameter of the lumens of the trachea. Okay, so how we do this? So we can contract and to reduce slightly the diameter of trachea and then we can actually increase the airflow rate. Now, different now, guys. Airflow rate basically means that the if you make it smaller, so means that with the same force, then the airflow will be higher. Are you clear? The rate, okay, but less air will enter, okay? So don't get confused about this, okay, to increase the airflow rate. So always remember now, uh, just to make you... Uh, when talk about airflow, airflow means that volume. Airflow rate basically means the speed. Are you clear? So how fast the airflow? So if you try to imagine that you reduce slightly, so you're going to increase the airflow rate. Increase the speed, increase, right? Because when you try to imagine that you blow out the air, Okay, now you try to imagine, now you blow out the air from your mouth. So this one, because your mouth open big, big, so the speed will be low. Can you see that? But, okay, this, can you see that the speed will be low, but the volume is large. Get the idea? Now you, you, you open your mouth, and then you, so a lot of air, but the speed is slow. But now the same air, but you close your mouth and you blow. When you close your mouth, you blow, the air now, speed higher, but the volume lower. So when contract, reduce slightly, airflow decrease, but airflow rate increase. Remember about this, okay? Be careful about this, yeah? Okay, so uh, with this, I have done the, uh, the structures of the track here. What you need to do, take about uh, two to three minutes to complete this histology, okay? So now look at this, okay, diagrams. So this is called histology, okay, this is black and white, okay, sometimes it may give you color, sometimes it may give you black and white. So what we need to do, we need to identify, it, okay, the layer of the tissues here, okay, and then we need to label. So first of all, always start from the innermost, so we have the lumens, right? So this structure is lumens, okay, so I don't say trachea lumens or lumens or lumen of the trachea, okay, and then... If you look at this, this structure, oops, sorry, this structure, can you see that? Very heavily, okay, why we stain so much? Because of different layer of the nucleus, can not? So making it seems like many, many layers, but in fact, there are only one layer. So can you see a many, many layers? Seems like many, many layers stacking out the cells, right? So the stains, but it, in fact, no, it's not stacking up. So this layer is termed as mucosa layer. Okay, so sometimes a uh, question also asks you for the type of cells. So type of cells actually two, but the major one is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. You can write down here, it also belongs to the layer called mucosa. Okay, so in the exam, please be careful. If label, you can be both either mucosa or pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay, but if question asks you what kind of tissues, then it must be pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium tissue. Okay, mucosa basically means, okay, mucosa basically means that the layer. For example, if I want to analogy in this case, okay, mucosa basically like uh, a taman, a residential area. Okay, this residential area, an area called mucosa. Okay, for example, taman ABC. But the type of houses inside, 
Yeah, this is means pseudo stratified. The houses mean the type of tissues. Oh, we got terrace house, we got condo. Okay, so these are what I mean as the layout, the regions called mucosa, but the type of cell. So be careful the question asks. Right? If the question asks you the tissues, what kind of tissues? It cannot be mucosa. But what kind of I means are layer? This is mucosa layer. Okay. Now, next. If you look at these regions, eh, a lot of dot, right? Can you see that? A lot of dot. Okay, because of the lacunae. Okay, so and the chondrocytes. So this one is the cartilage or incomplete C shaped cartilage. And if you look at these regions, okay, this, can you see that? This one is the tapering end, right? The end of the incomplete C shaped cartilage. Can you see like something like spindle shaped cells here? Spindle shape. So this spindle shape actually, they are the smooth muscle. Okay. So between the cartilage and also the darkly stained, eh, I have these stained cells here, we have the regions called submucosa. Now, question won't ask you what kind of cells that form the submucosa because it's quite complex. A lot of different types of cells that form this submucosa. Now, one of the things that we actually didn't highlight or didn't label, can you see something like this? It's something like okay, the channel. Can you see it? something like channel? From the submucosa all the way to the lumen. So this one you can label them. Okay, let me choose different color. So this one is okay. Wait. Okay, uh, sorry, no, so can I move it? Cannot. Never mind. Uh, okay, so this one is termed as mu curse gland. Okay, term as mucous glands. Can you see that? It forms a channel, something like a channel, right? Okay, so it's termed as mucous glands. And last, you can see that, okay, you have two kind of connective tissues here, okay? One is the adipose tissue. It's very loosely formed. And can you see that? After cartilage, you have this. Some structure is something quite dense here, right? Something quite dense here, okay? So this dense structure is termed as the connective tissues. Can you see that the dense structure here is termed as the connective tissues? Okay, so with this, we have done for the trachea. Okay, 